When people think of Las Vegas, they don't think of natural beauty. It's probably the last thing they think of, but right on the doorstep of Las Vegas is Red Rock Canyon National Conservation Area which is almost like a miniature national park. Now it's not run by the National Park Service, it's run by the Bureau of Land Management, but it has a lot of the same elements that you'd find in a national park. There's a scenic drive, there's pullouts where you can uh, take in the views, there's incredible scenery, rock formations, wildlife, everything you could ask for from the natural world. There's a visitor center with some great interpretive displays, and best of all, there are some incredible trails here. Hey everyone, my name is Chris Hazard. I'm a hiking guide. I've hiked here in Red Rock Canyon for many years. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the three must do hikes here, sort of the crown jewel hikes, the great hikes for beginners, give you a taste of what Red Rocks is all about. And those are Calico Tanks, Turtlehead Peak, and Icebox Canyon. Before we dive in, I just wanna give a big thank you to everyone who supports the channel and the website. I could not do it without you. It allows me to do these videos free of sponsorship. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you wanna say thank you for the video, if you find it helpful, you can just click that little thumbs up. It's an easy way to do it. And before you head out to Red Rocks, if you want to save a copy of these directions on your phone or print them out, I have a corresponding guide on my website called hikingguy.com. If you just search for Hiking Guy Red Rock Vegas, you will find uh, all the guides there and you can save them, bring them along because the cell reception here is a little bit sketchy and that way you have them with you. Anyway, let's dive in. So most people call the park Red Rocks or Red Rock Canyon, but its formal name is Red Rock Canyon National Conservation Area. So make sure you put that in your car GPS, otherwise you might be going somewhere totally different. The park is about 30 minutes from most places on the Strip. It's this big, wide piece of land that's basically all of the west side of Las Vegas. Very easy to get to. Now, before you go, there's a few things to uh, consider. First is whether you need a reservation or not. Certain times of the year, you do need a reservation. It can change, so I'll put a link underneath the video so you can check the most updated uh, times and dates that that is in effect. But basically, the way it works is you go to the website, you purchase a reservation for a timed entry, and then you show up at that time. If you have an America the Beautiful Pass, you can get in for just the reservation fee. Otherwise, you have to pay an entry fee as well. Next thing you think about is the weather. Usually surprises people because they see Vegas as the desert and they think it is uh, always hot, but this is the Mojave Desert. It's a higher altitude. The winters can be freezing and can have snow on the mountains here. Spring and the fall are the sweet spot, and the summers can be into the 100s, and it's only really safe to hike in the summer early in the morning. Also in the summer to watch out for are lightning storms and flash floods. Those are real things. If that is happening, you do not want to come here. And if it is too hot to visit Red Rocks, I'd recommend heading up to the Mount Charleston Wilderness, which is a little bit farther up to the north, but it's very beautiful, higher altitude, and uh, doesn't get quite as warm as it does here at Red Rocks. If you're wondering about gear, you can get away with fitness gear or light hiking gear here. You don't need anything too technical. I do recommend wearing a good trail runner, which will help you grip on the slick rocks here. And of course, you're in the desert, so you will need sun protection and plenty of water. Usually a half a liter water per hour is fine, but when it's hot, you're going to want something more like one liter of water. And I recommend bringing it all with you uh, beforehand. The visitor center is the only place that really has any facilities here in the park, and they do have some basic hiking gear, but you're gonna wanna get everything beforehand, uh, whether it's in Vegas at an REI or whether you bring it from home. And if you need hiking gear, make sure to check out my gear page. Everything on there is actually used by me, has been tested by me. There's nothing promoted or sponsored. It's just real stuff that works really well. Now, when you get to the park, I recommend planning your trip around the 13 mile scenic drive, which is basically a half circle that goes through the park. In the beginning, there's the visitor center, which is definitely worth a stop. Uh, great interpretive displays, things to see, things to learn. There's a the theater, different events going on there. So stop there. You can also ask questions to the personnel there. And then after that, there are some roadside pullouts where you can get great views of everything. And then there's about 26 different hikes here in the park. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do the three iconic hikes here, and I recommend doing those on your first visit. If you want to get uh, a lot of mileage in, you can do all of those hikes and maybe add a couple others onto it. But if you just want to hike a few miles, you can just pick one of them, maybe Calico Tanks, which is the most popular one, and do that hike. But 
do these first and then when you come back i recommend exploring some of the other hikes which are also beautiful but not quite as iconic as the three in this video all right the first hike i'm going to show you is called calico tanks this is what i'd call the signature hike here in red rock through the multicolored sandstone here of the calico hills it's a great hike for all levels of hiker including families it's only about two and a half miles round trip it takes most people an hour or two to do there's some stairs to walk up and some little slabs of sandstone to climb but otherwise it's pretty straightforward now the hike starts just a few minutes up the scenic drive from the visitor center at the sandstone quarry parking lot and i like to break the hike into two chunks the first chunk is the part up along the wash where you have uh, the sandstone quarry and the agave roasting pit which i'll show you in a second and then we're going to make our way up through the middle of the calico hills up to the calico tanks tank is a english version i think of the spanish word tanaha but basically we're referring to these big or pond kind of areas where the water collects and the wildlife comes down to drink even when the uh, springs and other streams and rivers have dried up usually water will stay in here for a decent amount of time all right so here we are at the sandstone quarry parking lot now this is a pretty big parking lot but it fills up rather quickly because it is shared with turtle at peak you can also hit some other trail systems here and it's also a popular place for rock climbing and if you look up on the cliffs around you you're uh, almost guaranteed to see somebody out there climbing or groups of people climbing it's always fun to watch them there's some limited facilities here really just toilets nothing much else so again bring everything you can uh, before you get here and to start the hike we're going to go all the way to the end of the parking lot you're going to look for an entrance to a dirt walkway here there's going to be two big trail signs one of them is for Turtlehead Peak, which I'll show you after this. And the other one is for Calico Tanks. We're sharing basically the same trailhead here. If you want, you can take a picture of the map. But the most important thing to note here is this trail sign. These trail signs are going to be with us in all these hikes. They're really well done. And if you look, it'll tell you the destination of where you can get from this trail. We're obviously going to Calico Tanks. So always look for the trail sign to say Calico Tanks as we go. Now, once we start, right in front of us is Turtlehead Peak. It's not the highest point in the park, but uh, it's definitely a high point that you get great views from. And I'll show you that hike up to there right after Calico Tanks. Shortly after starting, we're going to come to this big wide area here, this trail junction. We're going to go straight, and the trail actually goes off to the left, ahead and left. But we're going to make a detour straight to the sandstone quarry. Now, these are 10 ton uh, blocks of sandstone here. And the quarry ran in the early 1900s, but they shut down uh, when they figured out they could not make money. And you can see they just sort of shut down, called it quits one day because there's still a ton of these blocks around. But the reason they couldn't make money, the sandstone wasn't good enough quality. And it also took 400 gallons of crude oil to power a gas-powered tractor, one that looks like the one you see here, to haul these into Las Vegas. So long story short, they couldn't make money, but today it's a kind of a cool place to check out. Now, when you're done checking out the quarry, double back to the wide area and look for the trail sign. This is going to be our trail. And if you look here, if we go up close here, you'll see it says Calico Tanks on it. Boom. That's where we're going. Now, when you're going up here, you'll notice we cross over some washes. Don't go up the wash. You'll see people walking in there. They're not in the right place. You're going to go across the wash and follow the trail signs. There should always be trail signs where you're going. Just like this, we just crossed over the wash and there's the trail sign for it. So look for the trail signs. So something cool here, that is Turtlehead Peak. I have a guide for that if you wanna to hike to that on the website, but that is limestone. And that's actually come away from another big block of limestone that's just over there, uh, because this is on a fault line. So we're on a fault line right now, but Turtlehead Peak is limestone. Where we're going in the Calico Hills is all sandstone. It used to be all sand dunes at a time when this was one big, uh, basically, desert here. All right, this is the most important trail junction here. At the split, we're going to make a right towards Calico Tanks. If we go left, you go to Turtlehead Peak, but we're going to go right into the Calico Hills straight ahead and head towards Calico Tanks. Now, right after that junction, there's another little sight to see, the Agave Roasting Pit, which I believe was used by the Southern Paiute, who were native here. And they used to take whole agave plants, which, interestingly enough, is uh, pollinated by hummingbirds, and they would roast them whole in these pits for four days. 
you can see this picture of a, an Apache doing it. It wasn't a Paiute in that picture, an Apache, but you get an idea. But it's kind of cool to look around there and think about what life was like when they used to roast these agave way back then. After that, we're going to continue on the trail. There's another cairn, and we're going to be following these types of cairns, these big stone-filled bins full of cairns as we go up. They're real easy to see. The trail is wet, much better marked than it used to be. Here you can see there's another trail marker as the sand or the soil gets sandy here and we head into the calico hills on what i consider to be the second part of the trail you can see there's a little bit of like steps and walking up slabs of sandstone just watch your footing it can get a little bit slippery especially if it's sandy so just take it easy and here you can see uh there is a marker up in the distance so if you're not sure to go where to go look ahead for one of these trail markers it's usually pretty uh, easy to find your way once you look for that, but if you're not looking for those, it can get a little bit difficult. When you look at the trail signs, look at the direction of the chevron. That will tell you which direction the trail goes. Kind of makes sense, but if you're not really paying attention, it's easy to overlook. Here we are in the middle of the Calico Hills. You're going to get great views of all of the spectacular Aztec sandstone, which dates back to the Jurassic period, the same time that Dinosaurs like the T-Rex roam the earth, but it's just spectacular in here. All of the different colors of the sandstone, the different formations, the different rock. You could probably spend half the day just checking out rock in here. And we're going to continue up. If you don't see the trail, just look for the markers like that one up there. And don't be afraid to use your hands as you go up these steeper sections, these little scrambles. When you get to the top, if you don't know where to go, just get all the way to the top first and then look for the markers over there. We're gonna be going up the middle in general. We're never gonna climb up the sides of the canyon. And here you can see there's a easy to spot marker. It's gonna be basically a series of stairs and then sections where we're gonna go across big slabs of sandstone. Like this one here, you can see there's a marker in the distance and it's gonna alternate with some parts through uh, like washes and canyons. And that's basically how we're gonna get up there. But you're gonna go up the middle of the uh, Calico Hills here. There you can see it's telling us to go to the left and we're gonna go up these stairs. Now these stairs uh, I see in Instagram shots all the time. So if you wanna be a trendy Instagrammer, this is where you take your shot. Luckily we can go up these stairs relatively easy, no matter walking upstairs. And then once we get up to the top, we're gonna cross over another one of these slabs of sandstone. You can see this is kind of the pattern, some stairs, some slabs of sandstone. Just watch out for the markers on your way back, too. It's easy to kind of get dead-ended into an area where the trail ends, so just pay attention on your way back. And there's not a whole lot of climbing here. It's just about 400 feet altogether. So you're going to have to work a little bit, but no big mountain climbs here. This is a great example of a little wash area where we're going through the wash. And then we're going to arrive after about, I don't know, 1.2 miles or so at Calico Tanks. This is Calico Tanks. This is the end of that middle section. And in the middle there, you could see the sort of the natural way the stone has been formed. It's easy for water to collect down in the bottom over there. Now, today it was dry. It's not always full, but if you come here in the spring, usually there's some water in here early summer. And this is fun to see, but really the attraction is the views on the other side. And you're going to want to go around to the right-hand side. Go around the tank to the right-hand side. It looks a little sketchy from here, but the camera makes it look a little worse than it is. You're basically going to go along to the right, follow the right-hand side along until you get to the other side of the tank. And then the trail is going to be a lot more clear. You can see there's a little rock statue, a little cairn in that grotto straight ahead. We're going to go up to that slab of sandstone and walk up to the top. This is really the end of the hike, so if you wanted to turn around, you could at any point, but this is the nice part to just walk up here. And this isn't a big scramble. You can see there's little stairs coming out of the sandstone, but just be careful when you're up here. And then once you get up to the top here, the views are pretty spectacular, considering we didn't really hike too far. You're going to see some of the great oxidized sandstone down into the middle where the scenic drive and the visitor center was, and then off to the Vegas Strip in the distance. That's the Vegas Strip. And when you're done here, you're just going to turn around, go back the way you came. That's the hike. Uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. The day I was here, there was an injured hiker that I passed uh, before, and they had 
a Garmin InReach, which is a satellite communicator that they use to call for help. So uh, satellite reception here is good. The cell phone reception isn't good. So if you have an InReach device, uh, I'd bring it along with you just in case. Next hike is Turtlehead Peak, which is definitely the hardest hike that I'm going to show you here. And it's not one I'd recommend for little kids or if you're out of shape, it's not going to be fun. We're going to climb up to that big piece of limestone ahead of us and get some incredible views of Red Rock Canyon and all the way down into Las Vegas and all the way over to the higher spring mountains. Now, the hike is five miles out and back, about 2,000 feet of climbing, which is a lot for such a short distance. And I would call this hard. It's probably going to take most people around three or four hours to go up and back down. Now, the hike leaves from the same place as Calico Tanks, the Sandstone Quarry parking lot. And we're actually going to share the same trail in the very beginning as the Calico Tanks trail. But eventually, we're going to split off on our own to head up to Turtlehead Peak. And I like to break this hike into three distinct chunks. The first mile is uh, basically a gradual uphill. And it's pretty easy as we go up along the wash here. The second mile is pretty much the opposite of that. It's very steep uh, all the way up to the saddle here, just underneath Turtlehead Peak. And then from there, we have a half mile up around the back of uh, the way you can see Turtlehead Peak from the road, up around the back here to the summit, giving you two and a half miles one way approximately, and then about two and a half miles back down, giving you a total of five miles. Now, before we hit the trail, I just have a couple other gear recommendations. There's going to be some steep slopes here going up and down. So if you have trekking poles, bring them with you. They're going to help here. And it's usually a little bit cooler up at the summit. So I like to bring a windbreaker and another layer uh, just in case it's cooler up there. I can put that on when I get up and uh, stay nice and warm. And just like the last trail, if you look at the trail signs, uh, it's the same as before, except now it will say Turtlehead or Turtlehead Peak on it. And we're just going to follow those up to the top. All right, here we are at the Sandstone Quarry parking lot, and I want you to notice how empty it is. If you come first thing in the morning, you can kind of have this hike to yourself. But we're going to leave, and across from the Calico Tanks trailhead board, there's one for Turtlehead Peak, so just check that out, make sure there's no notices, then start on the trail. The same way I showed you for Calico Tanks, the Calico Hills off to the right over there. And eventually we're going to get to the Grand Circle Trail Junction. There's a big wide area. Off on the right-hand side is Sandstone Quarry, which I showed you in the earlier video. But the trail doesn't go through Sandstone Quarry. It continues over here on the left-hand side. And you're just going to look for the trail marker here and then go straight through to continue the trail up towards Turtlehead Peak. And same as before in the beginning, we're going to look for the markers. We're going to go right over the washes. We're not going to hike up the wash, but instead we're going to cross over it. Now this is an important split. We're gonna make the left here to the right, Calico Tanks to the left, Turtlehead Peak. Now, once you pass that, there is an interpretive display. And most BLM land, if you visited BLM land before, it's usually pretty primitive. But here, because so many people visit, they've really done a nice job with interpretive display displays like this. Tell you a little bit about what you're seeing and uh, what's around you. So very, very cool. Definitely worth the price of admission. Now, as you continue up more trail signs, we're going to head up on this berm and we're basically going to follow the wash up and the wash is down there to the right. We're going to follow this up until we start the climbing. This is all part of that initial first mile that I like to break it all down into. After a little bit here up on the top of the wash or the berm, we're going to go down into the wash and you'll see there's this big rock-filled cairn here with the trail marker inside. And we're going to head up in the wash for a little bit. This is the only section where we do this. We're going to head up in the wash and then look on the other side for the trail to continue. And there's a trail marker here to make it pretty easy. And we're going to continue heading upstream on the wash here. And the rocks, and you know, obviously are beautiful here. It's incredible. This is a climber's paradise. I think over here is a wall called a Sonic Youth or something. But you could see the sandstone in the front and then the limestone of Turtlehead Peak in the back there. It's really a pretty, pretty impressive chunk of rock. Now we're going to go up through the Mojave Yucca here. This is towards the end of the wash. And obviously the plants are going to change when you come. It might be different. It might be the same. 
And now we're going to start climbing up a little bit more. Now at this point, you're going to see a different type of marker. That's the boundary line for the La Madre Mountain Wilderness. Once you're past here, you're in the wilderness area. If you don't know what a wilderness area is, I have a video on my site called What is a Wilderness Area? It's pretty interesting. And if you look up from here, you're going to see the saddle. And that's our next destination after some really tough climbing. And you can see from the shot here, there's a gully that goes up to the saddle. We're always going to be staying to the left of the gully as we do this climb. We're always going to be staying to the left. Now, as we start the toughest part of the hike right here, you can see there is a cairn, there's trail markers. This used to be a lot tougher. There used to be almost nothing here except for a few little spray painted blazes. But today it's pretty good. There's spray painted arrows like you see ahead right there. There's cairns and there's definitely a well-worn path up here, but it is a little bit of a choose your own adventure. The trail does split apart and come back together in some points. As long as you're to the left of that gully, you should be fine. Expect to scramble a little bit. Um, nothing too hard, nothing too crazy where you're hanging off an edge or anything, but you will have to use your hands and kind of climb up a few little ledges of rock here. At some points, the trail kind of backs away to the left as well. You're going to go away from the gully, but it's always going to come back towards the gully. The gully is kind of the main route up to the saddle here. You can kind of get an idea of the steepness. I just wanted to stop. You can also see some of the blazes, like the white markers here as we climb up. But always just look. There's probably going to be something like this marker ahead of us or a well-worn trail. There are definitely clues if you look up ahead as to where you should be going. If you're not sure, just stop and reassess. Here you can also get an idea of the steepness. This is pretty tough. I think we're going to do about 800 feet and maybe a half a mile or so. There's another marker up ahead. But it's tough. Take your time. Pace yourself. And eventually when you get up towards the top, the trail cuts over the top of that gully area. We're going to cut all the way across the top of the gully before we get to the saddle. And then look for the trail to cut back. Here somebody's put some rocks there. Don't depend on that though. But it is a big switchback. You can look for these big rocks ahead of you. But we're going to cut back and come up to the official uh, part of the trail that comes up to the saddle here. And when you get up to the saddle, there's a big cairn telling you're here. You're going to get some incredible views off to the other side. The high mountain up in the clouds right there is La Madre Mountain. That's the highest points here in Red Rock Canyon. It's not Turtlehead Peak, but Turtlehead Peak is basically the highest point that you can hike to easily off of the scenic drive. Oh man, that part always kicks my butt no matter how fit I am or think I am. It's always a tough part, so just a heads up. While I catch my breath here at the saddle, I just want to thank everyone who supports the channel. I could not do it without you. Your support means that we can do these videos or I can do these videos without any kind of weird advertisements from green shakes or VPNs or whatever it might be. So thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone who supports the channel. And if you're new to the channel, uh, consider subscribing. I have all kinds of hikes, bucket list hikes from Las Vegas, Southern California, all over the world. So, and also hiking gear uh, reviews. So check it out if you are not familiar with the channel. And uh, yeah, time to get back to work. Then once we're at the saddle, you're going to continue towards the peak and you get great views of the prominent part of Turtlehead Peak, which is actually called Turtlehead Mountain if you look at the USGS maps. But people call Turtlehead Peak, and including the park here, if you look at the literature from the park, it's called Turtlehead Peak. Another trail marker. Now this part on the back side uh, up to the peak is a little bit of a choose your own adventure. You can see there's different trails here. Somebody has spray painted easy hard. I recommend taking the easy route, which is definitely not easy, but you can see the hard, more direct, uh, definitely slippery and loose gravel and rock. So I'd kind of go straight on this easy route. And again, it splits apart, comes back together. Just look for the most well-worn um, footprints as you go. And we're going to kind of hook around uh, along the back side of the slope and then kind of go back to the right. And here you can see there's a cairn. I wish there were some more markers, but it's not so bad. There's definitely a trail or multiple trails up to the summit. You can see somebody has spray painted a rock here. There's some blazes and markers, and every once in a while there'll be some smaller cairns. But we're, you can see we're kind of hooking around up and back to the right. 
you, know, you can get an idea of what the trail is like. You know, not the most defined trail because people have taken multiple routes, but generally it's not too tough to navigate. Easier coming down. Now here we are at Turtlehead Peak up at the summit area. You can see the views down into Red Rock Canyon are pretty incredible. And if you're visiting from the East Coast, this is a pretty pretty high mountain here. It's uh, only a little bit lower than Mount Mitchell, which is, which is the highest point on the East Coast. And if looking for survey markers are your thing, you can see there's a little uh, remnant of some sort of a survey marker there at the summit. There's also some ruins here of something that was here at one point. If you know it was here at one point in this little stand, let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to know. But we're here for the views, so we're going to check out the views. You can see in the distance is the other side of the scenic drive. Up in the back there, those are the spring mountains, which are covered in snow. And if we pan around the two high mountains behind us, El Padre is the lower of the pair and uh, La Madre is the higher of the pair. That's the highest point here in Red Rock Canyon. We can also look down to the other side of Turtlehead Peak, the part that you don't get to see from the scenic drive, which is also kind of interesting, beautiful, lots of sandstone down there. And then of course you could see down to the Las Vegas Strip and uh, the civilized, or I'm not gonna call it civilized, the developed parts of the area. Now when you're done here at the summit, you just turn around and go back down. And uh, when you're going to go back down, you're also going to get some nice views of the Calico Hills, which if you did the Calico Hills hike, uh, you know they look familiar. That's where we hiked through before. The last hike I'm going to show you is Icebox Canyon. And I have some local friends. This is one of their favorite hikes. It feels much different than the other hikes I showed you, even though it is in Red Rock Canyon Park. It's a box canyon. It's very shady. It's often about 20 degrees Fahrenheit cooler. You get cool air coming down the canyon, and it's a great place to go on a hot day. Now, this is two and a half miles round trip. It usually takes people about an hour or two to do. I've rated this as moderate just because the second half has some scrambling, has some light scrambling. There's nothing really dangerous where you're going to be risking your life, uh, but you do have to climb up some boulders and up some a steeper section. So I don't know if I'd do it with small children, but older children, you'd probably be okay. The Icebox Canyon Trailhead is on the other side of the scenic drive from Calico Tanks. So it's a good one to hit on your way out. And I like to break the hike up into two chunks. The first chunk is the approach to Icebox Canyon, which is a marked trail, kind of gravelly, a little rocky, but pretty, pretty straightforward. And then we have the scramble and hike up through the wash in Icebox Canyon which is basically following the stream bed up. And when you come to a set of big boulders, figuring out a way to get around them. And at the end, we're gonna come up to a little, uh, not a little, a big waterfall here uh, that dead ends at the, the end of the trail here. You can continue if you have rock climbing or canyoneering experience. I have seen people go up there, but for everyday hikers, you're gonna to wanna to end the hike here and just enjoy the scenery of the special place. And like before, we're going to have these nice trail markers here, but now it's going to say Icebox Canyon. So from the parking areas, you're just going to go to the, uh, I guess, the south side over here, and there's the trailhead, Icebox Canyon. Take a picture of the map if you'd like, but it's, it's pretty straightforward, not a lot of junctions here. We're going to head up into that canyon, which is Icebox Canyon, in front of us. Now the beginning of the trail, this approach part is just a regular trail. We're gonna go a little bit downhill in the beginning and you're gonna see a trail marker just like we had before. And the trail is gravel, pretty easy to navigate. It gets a little bit rocky, but nothing too, nothing too crazy here. Towards the beginning, we're gonna cross this big wash. The trail continues on the other side, just up to the right. Don't get confused when you come back too. I've seen people lost in this wash, so just remember what you did. But here you can see the trail marker on the other side pointing us in the right direction towards Icebox Canyon. And there's a little bit of gradual climbing as we go up towards Icebox Canyon. There is elevation gain, but again, it's just all gradual little climbs like this. There's no big mountain climb on this hike. All right, the big trail junction that we have is the SMYC trail, which goes across parallel. We're gonna keep going straight SMYC is uh, Spring Mountain Youth Center, which is like a correctional facility for youth, but they come out here and they work on the trails. It seems to be a good partnership from what I've read, so all very cool. 
Now, as we go up, uh, because it is cooler here, it's actually like a different microclimate than the Calico Hills. You'll notice pinions and juniper as we go through here, pines. It's really, uh, it's really spectacular, and the walls of the canyon are also spectacular as we get closer. And once we get up here, you're going to see there's actually some fall colors here in the in the wash or the the stream down below. It's really beautiful, and it just like I said before, it feels like you're in a totally different place than Calico Tanks or Turtlehead Hills, which feel more like the desert. All these colors that you see on the rock, this is all uh, erosion and minerals that are washing out of the rock. So when it rains and the, the minerals wear away, you can see here they, they weather the rock and they stain the rock. But this initial approach to the canyon might be, might be one of my little favorite short stretches of hikes here in the park. And I just love to look up. I mean, it's, it's just truly spectacular here. All right. So when we get to the mouth of the canyon, you can see there's two trails. Now, it's hard to go wrong here. We're not going to be climbing up the walls of the canyon, but you can see there are some trail markings. At this first split, I usually make the right and go up on the high route, but you can go down to the stream bed and start going through the stream bed, which is what we're going to do eventually. Uh, people have done all of those, but we're going to go up on this part of the top. It's a little bit rocky. I like this because the views of the canyon walls uh, are pretty nice up along here. And eventually, we're going to go back down and once we get down here, we're going to be um, basically in the, we're on the stream bed, on the bed of the stream that flows down Icebox Canyon. And we're going to basically follow that all the way up until we get to a bit of a dead end. I'll show you that in a second. But here you can see there's definitely a trail here, and it's definitely pretty easy to follow as we go down towards the stream. All right, here we are on the stream bed. And like I mentioned earlier, this is almost always dry. You don't really have to worry about wading up a stream. And it's littered with big boulders. And the whole challenge here will be finding our way, picking our way up along the stream bed and avoiding the impassable boulder fields. And what you're going to want to do is when you get to some big rocks, you want to look to the right or the left for these little cut around trails. Now, the camera's not really doing the size of these boulders uh, justice. They're pretty big, and sometimes you can come up to them and it's pretty intimidating. Always look for these little cut arounds. There's no real need to climb up the boulders unless you really want to. And you can do that too, and people certainly do that. And you'll see rocks piled up where people have tried to climb up there. But you can see somebody put a little cairn here. We're basically just following the stream bed upstream here. This is a good example of an area that is a little bit tricky. It looks like you can't get over the rocks, but if you look around the rocks, you can kind of just go around them. And right past the section, about halfway up through the canyon a section, there's some big boulders. And again, it looks like you could just step up these on the video here, but they're pretty big. And this is a section called the Grotto, which is up to the right there. Here you can see the path is pretty easy to, to follow as you go up here. This is a popular hike. There's a lot of people that go up here. Really cool weathering. You can imagine all the water that rushes down here, all the erosion over thousands and thousands of years. It's just a really cool, spectacular, uh, scenic box canyon to explore. Here we are at another series of sort of impenetrable boulders. You can see somebody put a log there to walk up. But again, look up to the right. This is probably the sketchiest part. This is right before we get to the end. We're going to climb up that little area right there up to the top and then go across the rocks uh, up to the right there. Once you climb up that part, this is me looking back here, but you can see it's a shelf and there's a path along the shelf. There are the boulders below that I showed you earlier. And you can see we're going to walk along this right-hand side. This is the section right before we get to the falls at the end. You can see there's some people there already. Unfortunately, they were pretty loud. So if you're here, be respectful and uh, try not to scream and play your Bluetooth speakers. But here we are at the end of the hike. Check out the falls, really nice. There's one right in front of you, the big one, and there's also a smaller one off to the right that you can check out. Some people scramble or try to climb up these. I highly recommend not doing that. It's definitely not safe unless you have experience. I like to just hang out here at the bottom of this main area. It kind of has an amphitheater feel. Yeah, nice. It's really big. Obviously, it's cool. There's some water here. Sometimes there's water flowing. Other times there isn't. But uh, check it all out, look up, take your pictures, and then when you're done, 
you just turn around and go back the same way you came. And uh, don't be afraid to butt slide down some of the bigger rocks that you came up earlier. Just play it safe, take it easy, and uh, have a good time. So you should have everything you need to know in order to come to Red Rocks and hike and have fun and be safe. Now, if you like the video, if you can give me a thumbs up, that would be awesome. Thank you so much for that. And again, if you want to save a copy of these instructions on your phone or print them out, just go to hikingguy.com. I also have other hikes in the Las Vegas area, including Mount Charleston, which is one of my all-time favorite hikes. It's a little bit north of here. If you want to check that out and see what that's all about, uh, I have that video on the screen for you now. You can just click there and check it all out. Anyway, guys, I'll, uh, I'll see you out in the trails. Have fun at Red Rocks. It is awesome.